Hello, welcome. I am Caroline Virgo, the director of the Clure Initiative, the Church of England's work against modern day slavery. On Wednesday, many of us will mark Anti-Slavery Day. This is an annual opportunity for churches, businesses, charities and individuals to consider afresh what they can do to eliminate modern slavery in their communities. Our service today will help us begin that process of reflection, as well as praying for the many victims of modern slavery who are hidden in plain sight. In particular, we would like to consider the plight of refugees and how they too can get drawn into slavery. Many of these refugees arrive in Kent, and so that is why we have come today to Canterbury Cathedral. And thank you, Bishop Rose, for leading today's service. With God, nothing will be impossible. For he is our God. And the God of salvation is making all things new. Amen. Greetings from the Huguenot Chapel in Canterbury Cathedral. We gather today on the 19th Sunday after Trinity for our weekly Church of England online service, a special service to mark Anti-Slavery Day. So let me say, welcome in the name of Christ. God's grace, mercy, and peace be with you. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, creator of all. To you be praise and glory forever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, may we rejoice in this day you have made as we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. As we begin our service today, let us join together in song and praise our God for the many blessings he gives us.
The Clua Initiative was launched in 2016 as the Church of England's formal response to the issue of modern slavery. It works across our 42 dioceses, providing training on modern slavery, sharing, learning, and encouraging communities to take action against modern slavery and exploitation. This short film shows the vital role the church can play in tackling modern slavery. One of the tragedies of our time which allows modern slavery to thrive is the collapse of neighbourhoods. We love the in, the in crowd or the in group and we often don't look across what can be quite a wide chasm. And human beings have always had the capacity to penetrate the gaps and to exploit the gaps. Um, so until we as a society are able to really create bridges across those gaps, it, it will be there. And the way it penetrates communities is it latches onto people who are vulnerable. So the more that we can help a community look out for its vulnerable people in it, the more we can help communities look out for each other, then actually we have a good starting basis in which we can prevent modern slavery taking root and, and exploiting people. Unless we deal with the root cause to stop modern slavery taking root in our communities, we'll never do it. So let's build safe, inclusive, mutually supporting communities. Community resilience can sound a slightly jargony word. I think we're talking about creating communities that are aware of risk, feel safe and feel and include all members. Churches have an ability to support communities where services may um, have a specific pot of funding or they may have a particular criteria where people can access that specific service, churches are more constant. Because the church is at the heart of every community, we have a unique opportunity to look at what's going on, to invite people from all walks of life to join together, and hopefully to look further and to respond better. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 35, verses 3 to 6. Strengthen the feeble hands, steady the knees that give way, Say to those with fearful hearts, Be strong, do not fear. Your God will come. He will come with vengeance. With divine retribution, He will come to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then Will the lame leap like a deer, and the mute tongue shout for joy? Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the book of Luke, chapter 10, verses 1 to 9. Jesus sends out the 72. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go. I'm sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or bag or sandals and do not greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house, first say, peace to this house. If someone who promotes peace is there, your peace will rest on them. If not, it will return to you. Stay there, eating and drinking, whatever they give you, 
for the worker deserves his wages. Do not move around from house to house. When you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is offered to you. Heal the sick who are there and tell them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. I am indeed heartened that as a church, we are spending this time marking Anti-Slavery Day. In our Gospel reading from Luke, we hear the words attributed to our Lord, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Today, the harvest is still plentiful. Millions of people are displaced around the world. Some are fleeing war, the effects of climate change, tyrannical and abusive governments, intolerant religious communities, and some are simply hungry, fleeing extreme poverty, hoping for an opportunity to provide for themselves and their families. Those fleeing are our brothers and sisters of the same Heavenly Father. The statistics tell us that approximately 50 million of them are trapped in some form of modern slavery. So the workers described in our gospel are still needed across the world and here in Britain to speak into these situations to bring liberty to the captives, to proclaim God's peace by challenging the negation of human dignity and personhood that is destroyed by the practice of modern day slavery. To engage with this work is to proclaim that the kingdom of God is near to us. Throughout scripture, in both Old and the New Testament, we see and experience a God who is interested in the lives of those who are most vulnerable in our world, the orphans, widows, and aliens. Those who are displaced from their homes and come to our shores seeking asylum or who come as refugees. Because refugees are vulnerable, they are at risk of being targeted by criminal gangs and drawn into modern slavery and exploitation. This is happening more and more, and awareness is low. The God we serve continues to be interested in those who are most vulnerable, in the gospel reading, the workers are being sent to the exact places where Jesus himself intends to be present. Earlier this year, for our Monday Thursday service of renewal of vows here in our cathedral, one of my priests who did not show up for that service later shared with me that he had learned that the coast guards were coming in having rescued people in the channel. He said, I grabbed the towels and dried clothes and rushed down to the shore. There I found myself on my knees, drying the feet of the many who had been rescued. That, my friend, is Jesus present in their midst. And that is a great reason not to be in the cathedral renewing one's vows. In that moment, the action of my priest was making real the words of the prophet Isaiah. 
Strengthen the feeble hands, steady the knees that give way. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong, do not fear, your God will come. The prophet's message speaks directly to us here in Britain. Our eyes are opened and our ears unstopped. We have seen firsthand those arriving on our shores and through the work of agencies such as Kent Refugee Action Network, CRAN, the Clua Initiative, the Anti-Slavery Collective, and the many other organizations working to bring to a halt modern day slavery. We too can be encouraged to be messengers of God's peace to the many who are seeking refuge and who are at risk of being trapped in modern day slavery. As God's church, we're suitably placed not only to speak into these situations, but to be the change we wish to see by welcoming and embracing the stranger, by giving a sense of belonging to those who are lost, by treating the vulnerable with dignity and respect, and by doing all that we can to educate a world and the society that is often indifferent to the needs of the vulnerable. To be Christ-like in our words and our actions. Let us play our part in making the kingdom of God a reality on the Kent coastline, in our communities and in our world. Join us in prayer and in the work being done with the various organizations so that together we can make modern day slavery something for the history books. In making such a difference, the words of the prophet Isaiah will become a reality as we will see the lame leap like a deer, the mute tongue shout for joy, water gushing in the wilderness, and streams will be seen in the desert. And my friends, together we can rejoice and say, the kingdom of God has indeed come near to all of us. Amen. Our next hymn reminds us of our calling as Christians to care for those who are vulnerable. Let's use it as an opportunity to respond to God after what we've heard in Isaiah and Luke's Gospel.
let us declare our faith. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our prayers today will be led by Emma Pennington, the Canon Missioner for Canterbury Cathedral, and Jonathan Arnold, Executive Director of the Social Justice Network at Diocese of Canterbury. Emma and Jonathan are passionate about how we as the people of God can act out our faith by showing love and support to those who are vulnerable or displaced in our communities. We pray for the witness of your church in welcoming the stranger, supporting the vulnerable, and seeking to help restoration for victims and survivors of modern slavery. Give us wisdom to learn how to recognize desperate need, exploitative behaviors, and cries for help. May we play our part in helping to prevent oppression and equipping communities to become agents of your healing compassion. Guide each of us to reach out with our time, resources, and networks. Help us to learn to see our neighbors in need and to work with others for their restoration and blessing. Amen. We pray for the work of the Clua Initiative, the Diocese of Canterbury, and all seeking to create communities of compassion. Through such witness, May your will be done and your name be hallowed. For Jesus' sake, amen. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing to help the leaders of the nations as they wrestle with issues of migration, security, political unrest, and climate change. Please give wisdom to decision makers and stir them to act justly and compassionately. In Jesus' name, and for his glory. Amen. Strengthen the feeble hands. Steady the knees that give way. Say to those with fearful hearts, Be strong, do not fear. Your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution. He will come to save you. Holy God, we thank you for these reassuring words from the prophet Isaiah, that you will come back soon, bringing justice and salvation. We pray that you would comfort all who are fleeing from peril, and that they would come with their fearful hearts and find refuge in you. In their vulnerability, may your presence be known, for Jesus' sake. Amen. We particularly pray for all those who have become trapped in the dark places of modern slavery. We pray you would bring people into contact with them who see their suffering and are able to help them move from exploitation to safety and freedom. We pray for organisations working with victims of modern slavery and ask that your grace would inspire them. Please give strength and courage to everyone working on the front lines of this vital work. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son our Saviour, 
Jesus Christ. The Collect for today. Almighty God, you called Luke the physician, whose praise is in the gospel, to be an evangelist and a physician of the soul. By the grace of the Spirit and through the wholesome medicine of the gospel, give your church the same love and power to heal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. In June, hundreds of people gathered here in Canterbury Cathedral to mark Refugee Week and learn more about how modern slavery can impact refugees. The three-day program, which was organized by Diocese of Canterbury, Canterbury Cathedral, Kent Refugee Action Network, CRAN, and the Clua Initiative, is just one way in which the church in this area is helping to gather people and inspire action. This short film will give us a taster. We are here in Canterbury Diocese and we are going to be running some awareness raising training with a group of Ukrainians um, and basically to inform them about exploitation, the risks of being exploited. This is really an opportunity to raise their own understanding of potential threats they could have, but at the same time giving them some tools and some ideas about how they can manage those threats. There is a strong link between refugees and modern slavery. Uh, every refugee is a very vulnerable and they are getting influenced so easily. They come, they arrive to a new country, they don't know how things work. They don't know whom to trust and whom not to trust. So it's very important to just again share that awareness about what modern slavery is, how to recognize the signs of modern slavery and where to seek help. People are forced to flee from their homes, leave their maps behind. When they come here it's very important for them to have a community around them, a community that serves, that gifts them yes. a new map to navigate a new environment. And, uh, and this is what your awareness raising, your work on modern slavery mm. is a keeping people to do. I think when you're talking about refugees and, and modern slavery, a lot, like when you see it on the news for instance, a lot of the time it's very easy to, to kind of break it down into statistics or and kind of you lose the humanity of a situation that is fundamentally all about the humanity and it's about the suffering of people and trying to find a way to relate them to yourself. This seminar, webinar was very important for me. I got lots of useful information so and it helped me a lot. Uh, like there are some subtle things, sometimes we don't notice, right? Uh, we think, oh, this person treats me well, uh, he or she helps me, and we fall into this trap. And I notice I, uh, it happened to me too. 
If you are in doubt, if you are in despair, if you don't know what to do and you think no one will help, come here and share your thoughts. If uh, this kind of seminars and meetings are organized all around the country, they will help not only Ukrainians, uh, not even refugees, they will help locals. I, I work, I work with lots of uh, local people and they face discrimination, exploitation. So it's extremely useful, it's um, a great initiative, yes. I would say go for it and attend the meeting and spread this information so we can pass it on, right? Our final hymn today helps us reflect on our shared mission to be children of light and show God's compassion to the world. Let's sing together. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. I'm in this ancient city for the International Commission for Anglican Orthodox Theological Dialogue. We have been meeting at St. George's Cathedral. Of course, the events of the last few days have been all around us. The horrendous incursion by Hamas, the murders, the kidnapping, the injuries, the impact on the people of Israel is immense and will last for generations. Last Wednesday, I was in Gaza, visiting the Anglican hospital there with Archbishop Hussam, the bishop in Jerusalem. There I met wonderfully dedicated, holy doctors and medical staff at the Anglican hospital. 
I can only imagine the horrendous situation that they find themselves in today. So please pray for both Israelis and Palestinians. Please pray for Jews and Muslims and Christians in this land, that there may be an end to violence, that peace with justice might prevail. And in this church of the Holy Sepulchre, where Jesus died, where there was all that pain and affliction, that desolation of Good Friday, may it also be transformed, as in this building there is also the tomb of the resurrection, the place of hope and light. Please pray for the peace of Jerusalem and for light and hope to infuse this region. Thank you.